Hey, what's up guys? This is Anthony from Anthony's Customs, and for this review, we are looking at NECA's Green Lantern and Predator 2-pack. This was New York Comic Con exclusive, right? Yes, I think it was, but there's no badging on the package, so I don't know. But yeah, it was. I got it while I was out of town and I lost track of everything, but yes, that's what this is. And this is the follow-up to the Armored Batman vs. Predator and the Superman vs. Xenomorph two-packs we saw at San Diego Comic-Con. And then, of course, with this one, we also have the plain old Batman vs. the Xenomorph. However, I wanted to review this one first because this one is far and above the best of their DC two-packs. Not even close as far as I'm concerned, and I'm going to show you why. So let's go ahead and get it off the stand and take a closer look. This guy stands just about seven and a quarter inches, which makes him just about 18 and a half centimeters. And we're going to review the Predator also in this review. Since it's a two pack, I want to keep them together. But we're going to start with this guy. It is basically the same figure as Superman and the same figure as the underpart of the armored Batman. So it does still share all of the weird anatomy issues like the biceps going the wrong way at the top the collarbone being totally weird just things like that they're all the same uh, but otherwise i mean like the individual parts of it look pretty good they did a good job with the organic sculpting it's just the anatomy is a little bit weird most people won't notice some people will but uh, i'm not going to get into that again if you want to get into that watch my superman versus what was it xenomorph superman versus xenomorph review as far as the paint goes on this guy, there is shading throughout the green, and it does look pretty good, though it is heavier in some places than others. It's still pretty nice. I like it. The line work is pretty clean where the green meets the black. The logo is pretty good as well. The white could be a little bit better, but it's certainly not bad, so that's okay. And it is a nice matte finish for the most part, so that's nice. This is obviously the Jon Stewart head, which I prefer. I like Jon Stewart more than Hal Jordan, so that's why I have it on there but I'll get to the accessories in just a second. But this head sculpt is pretty good. I like it. I like it a whole bunch. They did a really good job. He does have a little bit of stubble on there. Could be a little bit more consistently painted, but it looks good. And the eyes, they nailed the eyes, so I like that a whole bunch. So all in all, this figure does look nice. Aesthetically speaking, I'm gonna give it an eight, uh, mainly because those few anatomy issues are pretty severe. Uh, but here's the other reason I'm going to give it only an 8 for the aesthetics, and this comes into the articulation, and we'll get to that, but I do want to talk about it briefly. The hips are connected in some way to the torso in a crooked fashion. It was very obvious on Superman. This guy's a little bit less obvious, but if you look in there, you can see the balls of the hips, and, and they, the legs are going at an angle like this. And I don't know what's causing that. This ball right here, the ball hinge, is definitely lower on this side than this side. And you can take them, I guess it's kind of hard to show on this guy because of the black suit. But you can take the whole lower part and do this with it. And it doesn't feel like you're supposed to be able to do that. But you can kind of readjust them, and then they kind of stay in the right place temporarily. Now, the problem is they peg through, it seems, through the green part into up there maybe. So it's very hard for me to tell what's going on without most likely breaking the figure, so I haven't done that yet. But it seems like there's a weird manufacturing or engineering issue that has the hips completely cockeyed. And that's not great. So that does bug me, it drives me nuts. It was very obvious on Superman. This one's not so bad. I'll show you in more detail on Batman where you can actually see what I'm doing. But there you go, that's it for the aesthetics. Let's talk accessories really briefly. We do have the Jon Stewart head and the Hal Jordan head. The Hal Jordan head is pretty good. I like it. As for hands, we have the regular fist hand on the left side and the regular fist hand for the ring side. And then we also get a gripping hand for the left side and a non-ringed hand for the right side. That one has a hole in it because we do have some blast effects. We have one just little green, little spooty thingy. Spooty, that's definitely the right word for that. We have one that looks like a cross and a ring, which is the classic Green Lantern little like flare, lens flare type thing, and that looks cool. And then we have one that looks like he's firing his laser blast up against something, and that is also very nicely done. So that's cool. And then lastly, for the gripping hand, we have the lantern. It looks like maybe the handle is supposed to rotate on those little nubbins, but my nubbins are stuck, story of my life. 
and I don't want to risk breaking it because that is super, super thin plastic. But you do get the lantern as well. So that's a nice batch of accessories for the lantern himself. I do kind of wish I just had two of these so I could have Hal Jordan and Jon Stewart. But anyway, accessory wise, I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. That is a pretty good batch of things. I do wish they got a little bit more creative with the green stuff, but that'll do and that's okay. Now as far as articulation goes, it's the same as Superman, but we're going to run it really quickly anyway. I don't want to let this video go too long because we do have a lot more to talk about still with the Predator. Head is on a ball peg, might be a double, I think it's probably a double, but you get really good range, just goes to show a, even a single but a double ball peg is a great way to articulate a head and they did a really good job with that. For the shoulders, I do wish we had better range out of those. Don't go up horizontal. We do have full rotation. And what you're seeing fall off down there is black paint from the armpit. They put the paint on the disc part of the hinge and that's most likely gonna pop off for everybody. That's a bummer, but they didn't want the part appear to be black. So I guess that just that's just the way it goes. Bicep swivel is there, it's okay. Um, definitely weird sculpt for the biceps. Double jointed elbow. Works pretty well. You get decent range out of that, no issues there. And then of course the wrists are interchangeable, so there's a swivel and a hinge. Ab crunch, it does go back, but the sculpt here is definitely janky. There's no sculpt and there's a hole. Not a big one, but there is a hole up there. And also the it seems like the upper torso is too small because he's got very big hips. And so in order to maintain the proportionality, you would want this probably, I'd say 10% bigger. Just blow it out in every direction 10% and I think you'd have better overall look this guy's got more of like a like a runner's body I guess rather than a superhero body very very narrow torso upper torso uh, leaning forward it does lean forward and it's okay but again kind of an odd sculpt in the back not a big deal but it is it is a deal and for the waist we have a twist for the hips you already kind of saw what we had going on it's so weird the way they do things differently. You can see the ratcheting on this one and there's no ratcheting on this one. I don't, I don't know. Maybe they need to be rotated, but there's no way I'll be able to do that with them being so well seated. But either way, you get good splits. Bringing the legs forward, we do still have this issue where the legs are connected and kind of floppy, but they do come forward almost all the way. This is a diaper, so technically it can flex, a soft diaper, but you're still not getting that much range. You do have your thigh swivel, double jointed knees. On Superman when I did this, it tore the knee joint out. I was able to just peg it back in, but still, I don't wanna force that one. Let's try this one. This one works just fine. Very good range on the knee joint. It almost looks like the legs are white plastic. I'm seeing white in there. Maybe these are white plastic that's been painted. That's very weird if that's the case. Since they're solid color, you would think they'd be molded in black. You do have a boot swivel, and for the ankles, you have your standard type of hinge. If I can get it to go anywhere, you can bring them back pretty far. You probably go a little bit farther than that even going forward. That's about all you're going to get, which is definitely enough. And you do get a rotation out of that swivel hinge, which is kind of crooked, but you can rotate this and it gives you a really nice ankle rocker, so that's good. And then you have a toe hinge, which is pretty standard. So yeah, the articulation's not great, but it's probably good enough, and I'll give it a seven. There are definitely some issues, but I will give it a seven. Some poses look great with these bodies, by the way, but I think because of the somewhat questionable anatomy in some places, um, other poses kind of make that stand out. So. Like I said, it really depends on what you're going to do with it. But all in all, it's a solid release. I'll give it a 7. Overall, let's go ahead and look at the Predator. Honestly, I didn't expect to think the Predator was the showstopper of the set because we've seen a million Predators and they're all basically the same. And NECA's DC figures are kind of a new big deal. But this Predator is probably the best Predator NECA's ever released. I think. I'm not sure but it is pretty good. If I can get this off the hand without breaking it, I'll be amazed. I wedged that in the hand because it looks so cool and now I'm, I'm just gonna leave it. <laughs> now I'm regretting it because I don't want to break it. So this Predator, it uses a lot of parts we've seen before. So I'll give you a quick height measurement, but it'll be no surprise that it is the same as all the other Predators. It is about 21 centimeters and that makes it about eight and a half inches. It's a big boy. And like I said, main body parts are all reused. We've seen everything here before, except for this harness 
I believe, unless that's even been used before too, that I just, on one that I haven't had, and they just added the lantern logo, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure it's a whole new thing. I'm pretty sure. Maybe this part is too. There's maybe a couple new pieces, but as usual, the Predator is largely just another NECA Predator. I don't mind that. I think this harness, whether it's new or not, it looks great. They did a really good job with the yellow and the black griminess. That's a hard thing to pull off. It usually just looked like a crappy yellow paint job. This looks good. I love the specks of silver that they added. It looks really, really nice. And then the perfectly crisp logo right there looks great. That's all fine. Basic Predator stuff is fine. They did add yellow construct parts to his actual harness. You do get a gun with a double or a ball peg there and a ball peg there. It moves around actually better than basically every other Predator gun that we've ever had, that I've ever had anyway, and I've had all of them in recent history. So that's pretty cool. We do get this scabbard back here, which can hold a katana. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, scabbard is also a construct, which is, I guess, kind of cool. The one thing that I hate about this is that it's connected to his waist. So when you turn his torso, it doesn't. And that's just hyper unfunctional. That's not functional at all. Oh, one thing I want to mention here. This part is normally glued down. Not these side pieces, but the center part. Mine was glued crooked, so it's only glued right here, though. So I just pried it off. I popped it off. And while it's just dangling loose, it sits perfectly. So if yours is a little bit crooked, you can probably do that. Do it at your own risk, but that's okay. So yeah, that all looks really good. Aesthetically, it's great. Let's talk about the Predator head real quick. This head is one of their better heads. It's super subtle in the shading and the paint job is very clean. The eyes are wonderful. And the head is, and I don't think this was an accident, but it's not a construct type of transparent plastic, but the head is like a little bit transparent. You can get a little bit more light in that plastic and out of that plastic than is normal. And I don't know if it's intentional or not, but it's freaking cool and I like it. So I'm gonna give them credit for that. The dreads, by the way, do have black rings on them rather than just no rings at all. So all in all, the aesthetic on this is just fantastic. That is the alternate head. I'll mention this one too while we're talking about the aesthetics. Excellent, even though it's a repaint, it's an excellent, excellent head. Very nicely done. So the aesthetic on this Predator is like a nine and a half. Nine and a half out of 10. It's probably the best looking Predator that they've ever made. It is really, really sharp. And we will get to the articulation in a minute because it's not necessarily as standard as you might think. But first let's talk accessories. We touched briefly. There is an alternate head. So you have the unmasked one and the masked one. Both are very, very appealing. Nice paint jobs all the way around. I like that a whole bunch. We have some alternate hands. We have two gripping hands and then two wide open hands. And then for the actual accessories, we have the construct shuriken type thing, which I've wedged onto his hand and I am never gonna try to remove it because I don't think I wanna risk breaking it, but it looks great being in the translucent yellow. I mentioned the scabbard on his back. It also comes with a sword, obviously, that's made out of transparent yellow plastic. It does fit kind of funny in the scabbard. Uh, if you want it to fit properly, it's facing the wrong direction but if you want it to face the right direction, it still fits, so that is okay. And then we do have the big spear, which I think is the one we saw with maybe Ahab, if I remember correctly. I might not be. There's so many predators that are so similar, but either way, we have a giant spear. It's a long-ass spear, all in translucent yellow, and the translucent yellow they used is just lovely, especially on the backpack. I love it. So accessory wise for him, not the most. I think they could have maybe wedged in a little bit more. We've seen so many Predator accessories that could have easily just been thrown in in translucent yellow, but this is enough. So I'll give it a seven. And now it's time for the articulation. So Predators are not known for having the best articulation, even though it's technically all there, it doesn't always work well. So let's see if this one does. Uh, by the way, these tubers on here, mixed with the dreads on there, this guy just looks like a mean SOB. I love it. Personally and objectively, I love it. The heads connect on a straight peg on a big ball peg, which is pretty much standard. It's sometimes a little bit of a task to get the head on for me on this one. I don't know why. Maybe because it wasn't originally intended to fit on there, I don't know. But it does fit on, and if I move it, it might pop off, I don't know. Is it gonna pop off? No, it doesn't seem to be, but that ball peg gives you decent range, not a ton, but definitely enough. And if you force it, you'll get better range, but you do risk popping the head off. 
one of the issues with interchangeable heads, but that's the way it goes. You do get good range. I like that a whole bunch. Now the shoulders typically on Predators have been problematic. This one does have a big ass shoulder pad that'll get in the way, but it's very flexible as you can see. And the arm, at least when I moved it yesterday, let's see if it still works. It raises no problem at all. I didn't have any trouble moving that other than that shoulder pad being in the way. And I got the arm up to horizontal. So that's very good. No stuck joint there. Full rotation, that's fine. Bicep swivel, that's good. Double jointed elbow, no problems there. A little bit limited by the gauntlet, but as you can see, the gauntlets spin freely. That has also been an issue with some predators. So I'm very happy to report that this one does not have that problem. And then for the wrists, I don't know which way this is supposed to go. Probably like that, maybe? Maybe like that, I don't know. The wrists do of course have a swivel and a hinge. The hinge is a little stuck, but it should be fine. I've never had one of those break on me. For the torso, I'm guessing it's a double ball peg. This one is as stiff as they ever are. So you can probably heat that up and get it to move. Mine's very tight. The lower torso, um, it seems to just be a swivel. It could be a ball peg. I never can quite tell because there's a little bit of wiggle, but not a whole lot. But because of the way this is all set up, it's kind of a pain in the ass to pose them anyway. Uh, this also, I'm guessing this was reused because that looks like one of these that's in his butt. And then there's this one here, I, but it's permanent. I don't know what's going on there. That's That seems like a weird choice. But this is a soft thing on top of this one, which is also a soft thing. So the hips have perfectly good range going out to the side, full on splits, no issues there. Little looser than I'd like, but it's not necessarily gonna be a problem. There's still a little bit of ratcheting in there. And then going forward, nothing new there, but still plenty of good range. No issues, he can kick, he can go all the way back. Thigh swivel is there, though that one's stuck. Let's try this one, this one's fine. Double jointed knees, just standard knee hinges, no problems there, good range. And then the ankles are ball pegs, but they're one of the better ball pegs that we've seen, so that's okay. So articulation wise on this guy, shoulders are way better than normal. The rest is about the same. I'll give it an eight. No, nope, I'll give it a seven. That seems okay. But time for the final verdict on this guy. I think it is aesthetically just lovely and I don't even like the whole lantern thing and yellow lanterns in general. It's just, to me, it's not that interesting. I don't know why, it just never resonated with me. The green lanterns, yellow lanterns, it's cool. And at the same time, I just don't care. I don't know why, sue me. But this Predator is by far my favorite Predator from NECA right now. And I have all of the AVP ones and those are all a lot of fun. I like this one the most. All the AVP ones are basically one figure, but I still like them. But I like this one the most, by far, without a doubt. I love it. And I think you might too, but objectively, it's still not that great other than the aesthetic. So I'm only gonna give it an eight, which is still a pretty good score. So as a two pack, what do I score this? I think I gave this guy a seven, this guy an eight. You would think I'd average it out to a seven and a half. I'm gonna go eight. I'm gonna round up to eight because I think this is a two pack worthy of having despite the flaws. I think if you're a DC fan, if you're a Predator fan, if you're just a fan of fun stuff or cool things or something that's gonna look cool on a shelf, these two juxtaposed really are gonna stand out. They're gonna look nice. It's far better than the Superman and, Pred or and Alien set. That set was boring as heck to me as far as I'm concerned. There's no point in buying that unless you really, really like Superman. Uh, but why would you? And as far as the Armored Batman and Predator set, that was fine. But this one, way more shelf appeal. Definitely going to stand out and look good. So get this set if you have the choice, and I think you'll be happy. So there it is, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so. I have new videos up just about every single day, and thousands waiting for you, so come back for that. And in the meantime, keep collecting.